to move to a society in which all babies are designer bab babies rather than these uh, untested genetic experiments that we have now. We won't be able to have children just as we want them uh, because we won't know what they will be like. And I'm, I must say, I'm very pleased by that. We have agency and decision-making capacity. So that's one of our defining characteristics. We use tools. We should not be used by the tools that we create. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Matrix, or The Miracle. Babies need mothers, or so we've imagined. Yet two breakthroughs in the last couple of years call this fundamental assumption into question. Using only skin cells as their starting point, researchers in Japan in 2017 have grown egg cells in the lab. While in the Netherlands, scientists claim that they are within a decade of creating an artificial womb. Does this technology make babies in the lab a credible outcome and motherhood and birth potentially unnecessary? Will it lead to a dystopian future, profoundly threatening family life and society as a whole? Or should we welcome the technique as a means to enable infertile couples and gay men to have children and women to avoid the risks of pregnancy? Now with us to discuss these fascinating questions are three speakers. The first is Theodore Dalrymple. He's a cultural critic known for his opposition to liberal and progressive trends within Western society. His writing has appeared in publications from The Spectator and the British Medical Journal to The Times and The City Journal, where he is a contributing editor. We've got Ganesh Taylor with us. She is a training fellow at the Francis Crick Institute, the London-based Biomedical Research Centre. Her research predominantly focuses on the genetic formation of ovaries and testes. And last but not least, David Pierce, who's an eminent figure within the transhumanist movement and co-founder of Humanity Plus, an international organization which advocates for the technological advancement of the human species. Are babies in a lab credible and motherhood and birth potentially unnecessary? Theodore. I'm skeptical that there are uh, happy outcomes uh, that are promised either by uh, political or social arrangements or by technical progress. Uh, we've had plenty of technical progress and uh, I don't think anyone would say that despite that progress we are now living in a perfect uh, world. In fact, the National Institute on Drug Abuse says that, it's, uh, that we understand uh, drug abuse in a way that we have never previously understood has made tremendous advances and it made these claims as there was a larger increase in the number of deaths from uh, drug abuse than ever before in uh, recent history. Well, tomorrow is radically uh, opaque to us, so we, we're not able to say whether things uh, would represent progress. Uh, and I don't believe that uh, we can ever have a world in which, uh, for human beings anyway, uh, which is explicable uh, in purely uh, naturalistic or um, material terms, though I don't believe that uh, there is, that uh, there's any human being without a, a, a material being. Well, there are two questions, whether something, some development is technically possible and whether, if it is possible, it's desirable. And uh, the French writer Michel Welbeck, who, is, uh, who makes me seem optimistic, uh, says that uh, technically, wh whatever is technically possible will eventually be done, uh, whether it's desirable or not. Be that as it may, I think that the idea of a planned uh, society um, composed of whoever, uh, in which nothing untoward happens, in which everything is uh, predictable. I don't believe that we'll ever, uh, we'll ever be in that situation. Uh, and we won't be able to have children just as we want them uh, because we won't know what they will be like. I am not technically able to say whether uh, what the premise is uh, empirically correct, but I very much doubt that it will be uh, one which will bring universal human happiness. Thank you very much for that, Theodore. That's really interesting. Ganesh, what are your thoughts on this? Okay, so um, 
I should probably also caveat my statement with the fact that I'm obviously not an expert specifically in artificial uteri. Um, I study ovarian development and the cells that are within that, namely germ cells. So I have some modicum of expertise in that area. So that said, uh, the question is, um, one, uh, is it credible to believe that we could end up with artificial uteri? And um, my answer to that is, um, and would almost have to be because of my profession, uh, yes. Um, yes, because we're already on the path to, to, to doing this. We've kind of already committed. Experiments are already being done. We already have the bio bag that, you know, the, uh, the proverbial stick has already been put into the sand, or the flag, isn't it? Not the stick. Um, so is it credible that we'll end up with this? Um, yes, highly credible. Um, and obviously it's important to say at this point, however, though, that there are um, caveats to that. So just because we can have an artificial womb doesn't mean that that implicitly says it has to be a human one. It doesn't say automatically, will it be able to house um, fetuses from the age of, uh, you know, 20 weeks up? Is it from the very beginning of, uh, of their development? Um, something worth bearing in mind in this debate, obviously, is the fact that um, early human and early animal development is a very dynamic process and it looks very different early, early on, just after fertilization, first couple of weeks, depending on gestation time, compared to what it looks like in the later stages. Um, and that obviously ties into a point that's already been made by Theodore about abortion. So there's a reason why the abortion limit is set where it is, and it's to do with the, the ability of the fetus effectively to be able to survive beyond a certain point. So um, is it credible? Absolutely. Is it important to define what parameters under which we would uh, want it to work, if we should want it to work, um, and what it should represent in our society? Is it just a neonatal intensive care device, or is it something that we actually employ from the moment you decide to have a baby? That's that's still to be decided, which leads on to the second question, which is, um, is motherhood un entirely unnecessary now? So, uh, well, in, a, in this imaginary world where human artificial uteri actually exist, um, and of course we have to acknowledge at this point it is completely moot. It does not exist currently, but it might yet come to exist. But it's important to, to sort of think about what, what the implications of a technology are before you develop them even, um, mostly because of, again, a point that's already been raised, which is that human beings have a tendency of employing anything that they've created, regardless of whether or not they should or shouldn't use it. Seems thinking tends to go out of the window in those moments. So um, my immediate thought on the question of motherhood is um, probably uh, more, more of an answer as a human being, less of an answer as a scientist, but that's mostly is motherhood simply carrying a fetus in your uterus? I mean, I would suppose it, that it's absolutely not. Anyone who, any one of us who looks at our lives would understand probably that we've been raised by a lot of people and that there's much more to motherhood than just the person who carried you in their uterus. So I think that that is far too broad a statement to defend really. Obviously not is the answer to that question. However, if you, you know, granularize it down, there might be certain facets to that which then do become defunct. Perhaps if we create an artificial womb, that means that the day that I decide to have a child, it means that I can simply do a click and collect job or something like that, then perhaps one stage of my motherhood might be completely uh, out of the window. But um, I, don't, I just want to end basically by saying, I think the important thing to always remember with any kind of uh, discussion about technology is is the fact that we are human beings that use tools that's that's one of our defining characteristics we use tools we should not be used by the tools that we create and so i always implore people to remember that we have agency and decision making capacity and that people have different opinions on what is right or wrong or what is worthwhile doing or what tools should be used under which circumstances that was wonderful. Um, thank you so much. Very, very thorough response and lots of food for thought, I think, as we launch into the debates. But first, we must uh, turn to the thoughts of David Pierce. Are babies in a lab credible and motherhood and birth potentially unnecessary? Uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, they are credible and, uh, yeah, uh, highly likely. Um, first, just a quite, quite, quite a basic question. Do we think that it is 
ethically permissible to conduct uh, untested genetic experiments creating a child with a genetic disorder. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.